<laughs> All right, what's happening, guys? Here's the deal. We got the depth map effect here in DaVinci Resolve 18. And it's, it's very cool. I mean, you could do some awesome stuff with it, but I was wondering how well will that work on depth of field? So I'm working on some product shots and I was wondering, hey, will the depth of field effect that we have in DaVinci Resolve 18 work as good as my $2,000 Canon 24 to 72.8 lens creating that depth of field? Because we all love some good bokeh, right? That shallow depth of field helps your subject stand out. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to use these two clips. Here is the first one using the Canon 24 to 70 2.8 lens. Cost me $2,000 when I bought it. This is what it looks like when you use that 2.8 depth of field. And here's the same shot, but I boosted up the aperture so we have no depth of field here. Can the depth map recreate? the depth of field that we get at 2.8 with this lens. So let's jump into Resolve and see how well the depth map does at creating some shallow depth of field. See you in the studio. All right, guys, we're in Resolve here. So the first clip that we looked at is this one right here. You can see I shot this on my Canon 24 to 70 2.8. We're at an aperture of f2.8, and we're getting that great depth of field there, that nice bokeh in the background, right? We got that nice blur there. Is the depth field effect able to recreate this? And if it is, how well? So my next clip here that you saw, this is the same clip. Tried to get the same angle here. We're at about 35 millimeters. I think I was at about f... 13 or 16 somewhere in that range so you see a lot more in focus in this particular shot so you can see here what we want to do is isolate the wallet here the ridge wallet and then we want to be able to blur that background a little bit more and see how close it comes to that 24 to 70 2.8 so you can use the depth map here in the edit tab, but we're jumping into the color tab. If you guys want more tutorials about the depth map, let me know. I can make more about it and how it works and using it in the edit tab versus cut or color. I mean, um, we could do that, but I'm jumping into the color tab. So got my clip selected, boom, jumping over into color. So what I want to do first is add on the effect into my node. So I did do a little color grade on here. It's a little dark, so brightened her up. And actually, just in case we're looking at something different, you're not seeing the same thing, you can come to workspace, reset UI layout, hit that, and we should be looking at the same thing. So you can see once I hit that, it changes it. Now it looks like this. So I've got my, my uh, node that I added a little color grade to. Now I want to come to my effects, which is right up here at the top of the screen. Click on that guy effects right there. Scroll down until we get to Resolve FX Refine, and that's where you're gonna find the depth map. To add it in, just click on it, drag it over. You'll see a little plus if you hover over the line there and drop it on. So once you drop the depth map on there, you're gonna see in your settings here, you've got a bunch of different options. There's a whole lot of stuff in there. I can cover that in another video if you guys are interested in like an in-depth, like what does each one of these sliders do? What does it mean? That kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments. We can cover that if you're interested. But for now, all I wanna do is come to quality and I'm gonna change it to faster because it's just gonna work better for our tutorial here. And the reason being is that this effect does use a lot of you know power and resources. So if you're doing a project, you probably wanna use better. But if you are just testing things out and trying things out, I think faster works out just fine. So I did close my gallery over here, get a little more room on the screen, but let's just take a look at our image here. It's just so you guys know what, what you're looking at when you see the depth map preview here. So the areas in white and gray are areas that will be affected by the blur that we're going to apply. Now, if you notice, we do have a gradient kind of in the background there. So if anything is solid black, that will not have the effect applied to it. So in this case, I don't actually want the effect to be applied to, I know this is the log and the wallet here. I actually wanna flip that and I want it to be applied to the background to see if we can get that depth of field and match the 24728 from Canon. So in order to do that, just come on over to invert. Boom, I'm gonna invert it. Now I'm gonna adjust some of these just a little bit and even just by turning it on, you can see it does a better job here of isolating out the wallet and the, the stick or the, the, the not the stick, the log. Um, so you can see that the background is gonna be affected because that has more of the white and the gradient to it. So turning off the depth map, the next thing we wanna do is add in our blur. So there's different ways to do it. Here's how I'm gonna do it for now. I'm gonna add in another node with option or alt S. And the first thing that I'm gonna try is just jumping on the lens blur. So here's lens blur. Boom, I'm gonna drop it on there. And now you can see it's blurring everything, right? That's not what we want it to do. We wanna use the mask from the depth map to apply the blur. So in order to do that, all you gotta do is come over and connect out your, uh, your blue square here to the blue triangle. Boom, and there you go. So you can see here where the depth map is, where it was black, right? We're not really affecting the log so much. Let me zoom in. 
and we're not affecting the wallet too much. But notice we do see a little bit of a halo going on around there, around the wallet. And the background blur, does it look like a lens blur? I mean, at this point, no, it doesn't look like the 2470 from Canon. It's, it's definitely not. Does it help isolate the subject? Yeah. So I'm going to go through here and just adjust some of these settings, see if we can make it look a little bit better. And let's see how that looks. So adjusting this blur here, in my opinion, is not really getting close enough to what the 2470 looks like at 2.8. I mean, it's hard to replicate that outside of the camera. It's best to do it in camera if you can. But the downside is those lens cost a lot of money, $2,000. So let's take a look at this here. Now we are getting a little bit of blur to the background here, but let's see if we can just fix up this depth map a little bit because I don't like how this has a little halo around it. So coming back to our depth map here, I'm gonna try uh, the isolation here and see if we can change that a little bit, see if that'll help. And even turning on the post-processing here, you can kind of work with that a little bit and that's gonna help take that away a little bit as well. Now, is it perfect? Is it as good as just using the lens? I don't think so, but but you can do things in here that will at least help make your subject stand out a little bit more. So that's looking better here. And if I turn off the lens blur, you can see where we were before. Eh, I don't think that works so good. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to get rid of the lens blur and we are going to try a different blur. Let's try something maybe like the Gaussian blur. So I'm going to come back into my effects library and we're going to go ahead and grab the Gaussian blur. And even this, uh, I mean, it gets... It kind of gets cloudy, right? Because the depth map isn't affecting everything. So maybe you can make some adjustments here to the depth map to help it, you know, affect that background a little bit more. You could always try that. And in order to make those adjustments, I'm going to come back, click on my depth map, and maybe you want to adjust the near and far limit, right? So if I, if I bring that in a little bit, Okay, it's uh, it's making some changes there. It looks okay, but look at the edge here. It doesn't look so hot, right? Okay, so even that, eh, it's not so great, right? I mean, it's okay. Don't get me wrong in a pinch. I might use it for something, but maybe not in this kind of situation. Uh, you know, it, it's not great. I would definitely go with a kind of 24728 at 2.8. It's going to just give you a much better depth of field than this effect is going to give you here in Resolve. But you do have other ways that you can try and do it. This is just a quick way you can try and do it. You can also even, if we reset our node here, come on down to our blur and we can just try and, you know, blur this and then flip our, our depth map back. That might even work better if you just use the blur down here, you know, in, in the blur section of your adjustments that might work out pretty good too. And again, just coming back, look at, I mean, the, the 2.8, it's just, there's really no competition there, I think, you know. But then again, I paid $2,000 for this lens as opposed to the DaVinci Resolve that they just added the effect in. So I'm sure you, there's ways to tweak it and make it look better. But the other thing I wanted to try is see how does this effect, the depth map, work on iPhone footage? But before we get into iPhone footage, I wanna take a quick moment to talk about our sponsor today's video, the Ridge Wallet. Yo, what's happening guys? Today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. And I just want to take a second to tell you about it a little bit because I've had the Ridge Wallet for a little while now and I've been loving it, man. This thing is great. The biggest thing that I like about this, and if you're like me, I want something smaller in my pockets. Look at these guys side by side right here. This is the Ridge Wallet. It's a whole lot smaller than my old school wallet. My old school wallet, boom. Look at that. I had to open it up like that to get anything out of it. Well, we don't need to do that anymore. I'm gonna throw this guy away. Woo! See you later. We don't need that. We're going with the Ridge Wallet. Okay, because I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of carrying tons of big stuff in my pockets. My big iPhone, my keys, my this, my that, all these things. I just want something small to be in my pocket. It holds up to 12 cards in here. So I think I do have 12 cards in here. Also has a money strap on the back here. And I only got a dollar in mine right now. But what's cool is on the back of here, you've got some grippies. So your money's not gonna go flying out. It's not gonna fall out. You don't gotta worry about it going anywhere. It's held tight in there on the Ridge Wallet. And not only is this one stylish, I got the carbon fiber edition here, but you can get up to like 30 different styles. I mean, it was so hard to pick which one I wanted because there's so many cool ones. And like I said, the, my favorite part is that it's small in my pocket. So the Ridge Wallet will make an awesome Father's Day gift. If my kids got it for me, I would be loving this thing for sure. So you can save 15%, get one for your dad or tell your kids that you want one. Save 15% using the code Jason Ridge. I'll leave it in the description below. I'll leave a link for you as well as that coupon code Jason Ridge. Save yourself 15%. Get a Ridge wallet, or better yet, get your kids to get your Ridge wallet for Father's Day or your birthday if it's coming up. Thank you, Ridge, for sponsoring today's video. So let's get back to Resolve because I want to see how the depth map does on this guy. And I actually have some iPhone footage that we're going to try that depth map on and see how well does that do. Can we get some depth of field? Match that $2,000 lens? Check it out.
All right, so a big thank you to Ridge Wallet. Now let's check out this iPhone footage. So I filmed it on my iPhone 13 here, filmed it on this guy, just in the regular video mode. I didn't use cinematic or nothing like that. Now you do get a little bit of depth of field uh, kind of by default here on the iPhone when you're, you're relatively close to something. I tried to frame it up the best I could to match what I got on the DSLR here. And you can see the background, it's a little, it's a little soft, uh, but let's see how the depth map does. So I'm just gonna come on down. We're gonna grab the depth map, drag that guy on, boom, drop it in. We're gonna change this to faster so it works faster for us. We're gonna invert it and I think we're gonna adjust our limits a little bit. So the far looks good. Push out the near a little so we'll have our wallet as well as the uh, stick or not the stick. It's not a stick, it's not a stick, it's a log. It's a log, it's a piece of wood, a piece of firewood. Well, I got the piece of firewood there. We want those to be in focus. So we're gonna leave that like that. Now let's add in another node. I'm gonna connect up my alpha channel, turn off our depth map preview. Now just for fun, let's try the lens blur on this clip, see how it does. Drop that on there. All right, we need to invert our depth map, map there. It's not too bad. I feel like it's doing better than on the DSLR, although the detail we had in the background here from the iPhone is not as good as the DSLR, which means Resolve has less work it has to do to the background here, right? But look, we still got that halo, so we'd have to make some adjustments to our depth map here and uh, make sure that, you know, we're not getting all that in there because nobody wants to see that. So I've been noticing too, using this effect, that it is tricky when you're trying to really cut out around a subject like this. Like you would think this would be pretty easy for the depth map to do because it, it's a hard edge, right? So you're not trying to get around, wait, hair. Well, I don't have any hair, but, but you're not trying to get like, you know, pieces of hair or finesse the, around the edge of an object. I mean, it's a hard edge. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, and you know, hey, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm not adjusting the settings right here. Could be that too. So let's talk about what is a better way that you might be able to do this. This is kind of like a bonus. I, I wasn't going to throw this in there, but I'm going to throw it in. Maybe it's going to help you guys out. So let's say I really wanted to isolate this subject. Probably what I would do is I would come in and I would go back to the edit tab. I would take my iPhone clip. We're working with the iPhone clip here. I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to jump back into the color tab. I'm going to reset all my nodes here. And what I would probably do is I would come in and use the new object selection tool in the object mask, which is only available in the studio version. But if you got the studio version, this might be the way to do it because I would want to select the wallet as well as our piece of firewood here. I'm going to select that. And what I want to do is just mask that out. So I have only that. And then I would just put that on top of the footage with the depth map. So that way, maybe we can kind of get it to look a little bit better here. So if I toggle on and off my mask overlay here, it looks like it did a pretty good job of selecting it. I'm gonna go ahead and track this forward and track this backward and let that do its thing. And then we're gonna have that isolated. We'll mask everything else out and then throw that depth map blur in the background. And that should help out a little bit more too. If you guys haven't tried out this object mask tool, you really got to check it out. Got a video up here where I ran through a bunch of different examples as well as some of my own footage because yeah, it's going to work on real nice footage, but how does it work on your footage? So if you want to check out that video, link up there, check that out. All right, so the track looks good. Jump into my clip on the bottom. We're going to dump the depth map back on here again. Boom. Hopefully it'll give us a little preview here. I'm going to add in another node after it here. And we are going to throw on some blur. Let's try the lens blur on here. Turn off our preview, connect up our alpha channel there. Now we can see what's being highlighted and turn that off. So that definitely works out better. Turn off our preview. So now you can see that we still have that halo around there, right? Now this is why we actually isolated the same subject in our previous clip, because now I'm gonna come back to my previous clip. I'm gonna add an alpha out. I'm gonna connect that up because all I want is this part. All right, so the bonus tip on top of the bonus tip is this. So the reason why we wanted to isolate this guy and track it is that now we wanna make it just a little bit bigger and then it's gonna cover all the blur that we have that the depth map created here. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna jump back to my other clip and there's different ways you can make this bigger. I'm just gonna drop a transform node on here and we are gonna boost it up, make it just a little bit bigger here. And actually what I wanna do is connect my alpha to the transform to the alpha out. And now I'm gonna zoom it up, boom, just a little bit bigger. So now when I come back to this one and I line up my clips properly here in the edit tab, so I just moved the clip with the depth map on the bottom and then I have my isolated subject on the top. Now we can see it looks a lot better. I might even need to make it a little bit bigger. I still see a little bit of a halo in there, but you get the idea, right? We're gonna make it just a little bit bigger so that it covers any kind of uh, blur or, or halo that we might have going on there in the depth map. All right, guys, wrapping up here. Does the depth of field 
in DaVinci Resolve when you're using the depth map, match the Canon 24-70, to 2.8. This is version 2 that I have here. And no, it's not going to do as good a job. I'll take this lens any day over trying to recreate it in software. Now, I'm sure there's more ways you can play with this and get it to look better. Yeah, but you know what? If I have the option, I'm going with the lens and I'm going to get it right in camera because that's your best bet. Nine times out of ten, you want to get it right in camera and not have to try and recreate or fix things in post if you don't have to. Because it's going to make more work for you. And as you saw in this case, it's just not going to look as good. Now, this did cost me $2,000 when I bought it. And even the new Canon, you know, was it 28 to 70s or whatever it is, the new RF lenses, dude, these things are expensive but the results you get are phenomenal. So that is the depth map here in DaVinci Resolve. A huge thank you to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring today's video. If you are interested in one of those wallets, save 15% link in the description below. Check that out, tell your kids you want it for Father's Day or just go pick one up yourself because they're cool, they're small, and for me, works great in my pockets. So thank you guys for watching. With that said, I will see you guys in the next video. Canon 2470 2.8, love this beast. We'll see you, peace.